Okay. Welcome back. First of all, we are up over 7,300 subscribers, which is amazing. Thank you very much. We're closing in on 800,000 views. Very cool. I wanted to do a follow-up on my Reddit True Tide experiment. If you haven't watched that video yet, it is this little guy over here. Have scientists found the magic weight loss drug? I did actually two cuts of this. I did like a five-minute cut and a you know the whole unedited not unedited, but like uncut 30 minute long one. And the 30 minute long one is doing quite well. It's got like 5,000 views, which is, it's just on this little slow burn. I guess people are finding it and finding what they're looking for in that. So I wanted to do a little follow-up because, you know, uh, that seems to be important. It seems to be hitting. So uh, before we just dive right into it, uh, I started red on March 1st. I was 198 pounds. I had done a cut in the fall and I was uh, I was pretty happy with how that went. I mean, I think I maybe cut a little hard at the end and lost a bit of muscle, but that sort of seems to be always the way. And I just kind of like messing around with compounds anyway. So I thought I would try Redditrutide because it's all the rage right now because I had kind of put on some weight in that, in that ensuing time. Actually, you can kind of see this little guy on the bottom right. That was what I looked like after that cut or probably a few days before I ended that cut. It looks great. I don't look that good right now. <laughs> what can you do? But uh, yeah, so I kind of wanted to, you know, get back down a little bit and uh, see how good I can look. And I have not been as happy with the result of this cut as I was there. I mean, there I'm probably 170s, low 170s right now. As of this morning, I'm 180. Uh, let me, this would be a good time to actually just cut right into the weight stuff. Let us go to that. This is straight out of my Withings scale. So you can see like as of this morning, 179.7, the bottom is body fat. So there's March 1st, 198, and you can see it was just kind of like a steady march down week by week to kind of a low of around 175 or so on, when was that? May 3rd. And then in May, I've kind of let myself eat a little bit. What I was doing up until a couple of weeks ago was about 1.5 milligram split into every other day administrations. And then I had sort of read some stuff online just anecdotally from a couple of people saying that perhaps the one bolus dose per week, so taking that whole 1.5 at this, let's say the start of the week, Monday, whatever, instead of how I was doing it, which is say 0.5 every second day, that larger bolus dose might have additional metabolic effects in terms of like speeding up your metabolism and that sort of stuff. And I thought, ah, I may as well try it. I've tolerated Reda extremely well. I haven't experienced any nausea when I take something like Milano Tan 2, which if you know anything about it, it's a peptide for tanning. Oh boy, the nausea is real with that one. I took, it's a little sidebar, I took a little bit too much of that. I think it was like last Monday, so a little more than a week ago. And holy F, you know, facial flushing, you know, nausea, and just like 23 of 24 hours with, you know, a hard on. Great stuff. <laughs> not great stuff. It's not as fun as it sounds. <laughs> so yeah, be careful with your peptides, boys and girls. Okay. So, but anyways, back to the program. Yeah. So, I mean, I was pretty happy with the weight being cut. I do think quite a bit of it came off as muscle. And that is, that has, I don't think it has anything to do with Redditrutide itself. I think that is just the rapid cut did that really. So I think that is what was to blame is if you're losing weight that quickly, it's some of it's going to be muscle and I wasn't perhaps training as hard as I could have been in that time frame, And so whatever, whatever. And now I'm going to kind of play around a little bit more, like I said, with the bolus dose of redditrutide and see how that goes maybe for another week or two. And then I might back off the redditrutide and just focus on gaining back some of that muscle I lost because it doesn't feel good to have lost that muscle. And then the actual, like one of the actually interesting things that I found in, during the course of this Reddit True Tide is to do with the, the blood work. I get blood work done every three months. I freaking love blood work. It's just such a great insight into your health. And I'm fortunate enough to have a doctor up here that writes me lab recs for that kind of stuff. I uh, used to, for a couple of years, I got them every month, which is probably a little excessive. And now it's just every quarter. I have a nephrologist, a kidney doctor who also requires me to get blood work done every quarter. So between my main doctor and the nephrologist, I'm just going in for, I think the last time I went in for labs, like which was this month, 
they took six vials of blood or something. So a lot of cool data I get out of that. And I may as well go over some of that. Coming out of the most recent one I did, which was I think on May 20th. Let me just cut over to that. Okay, I'm gonna just gonna go over like the liver markers. I've had up and down liver markers. This is ALT. I'm not gonna pretend to know a ton of stuff about, you know, what each of these are, but ALT is a liver marker. And you can kind of see historically where I've been. I mean, I've been up as high as like 77, well, 232. There's a 232 way down there. Let me see if I can go find it for you. Way down there, which was absolutely crazy. That was, that was not fun. <laughs> I felt like absolute trash. But yeah, it's just been improving ever since, I would say, the fall. It kind of spiked a little bit in the fall. But this has been the first time... Now, because I, I last the last blood test I did was in February, and that was prior to me starting Reda. And now, post Reda, post three months of Reda, I've got an ALT that's at twenty two, which I believe is like the optimal range, not even just normal. It's optimal, which is fantastic. So the liver has never been healthier, not for literally years, you know, because I've got these blood tests since like two thousand one. And so that's fantastic. If you're someone that has like liver issues, you know how it feels, you know, to have like, like, you know, maybe, maybe you've got like fatty liver stuff going on or whatever, but when your liver is out of whack, you're, you know, you're heavily fatigued and you're just, ugh, just dragging. It does not feel good at all. So don't have that issue right now. And the other one would have been AST, another liver marker. And you can see the exact same thing happened here, AST right down into like a level it hasn't been in a very, very long time. It's at 23 here. And that is another one that's in the optimal range. The other really interesting thing, if I can find it here, let me just see if I can find my EGFR. EGFR is a calculated kidney health metric. It's not ironclad. The things that affect can affect EGFR. Well, there are a number of things. If you're a bodybuilder, because this is a calculated number, it can show as lower if you have a disproportionate amount of muscle mass on you. I am foolish enough to think I'm a bodybuilder. Obviously, you know, if you look at me, you think, do you even lift? I literally had my middle son. We went to the movies recently. I took them to Final Destination. And he said, are you still weightlifting? <laughs> I almost died. Ah, that kid. Anyways, he's done really well for himself. He's at 195 pounds and he's probably not even he's maybe five nine he plays rugby absolutely incredible so he he's entitled to ask me if i even lift in any case two things that affect this one kidney and you know a bodybuilding and i happen to have both of those characteristics that's why this number is about half of what it of what you'd expect it to be if you had two kidneys but i had a nuclear scan about a year ago which is the, the you know the top top kind of the the thing that you could trust more than a calculated metric like this and my one kidney functions at the level of what a person my age with two kidneys it functions at 110 percent of what that level would be so i'm not at all worried about my kidney but what's very interesting is that this even this number popped up and this hasn't popped up like this I think the last, so there you go, May 20th, 2021 was the last time I had a number even in the 60s, I believe, if I'm just scanning. So that's fantastic news. I don't know what to attribute this to. You know, I actually spoke to a friend of mine, Vigorous Steve. You should follow his channel if you don't. He is an absolute god when it comes to his knowledge of this sort of stuff. But I, I did actually forward him some of these results because he's advised me on my blood work before. And he doesn't think that the, the effect of retitrutide would be that profound on that short a time frame. He thinks it's more to do with something I've added or removed from my diet. And, you know, to be fair, with, on Reda, I've removed a lot from my <laughs> diet. <laughs> you know, you're just not eating as much. So it's, it's going to be pretty hard for me to nail that down. But it's nice to see these markers where they are nonetheless. So... That's it. That's my little update for Reddit. It went probably longer than I needed to, to make it go. But uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. As always, thanks for watching that video. I'll put a link to that original Reddit deep dive. I'm still quite happy with Reddit. Um, I think you can, you know, the, the, the sort of clinical range is more like three to five milligrams a week. They're obviously, they, they, they're doing trials with people that are 10, 12 milligrams a week, like up to those ranges. So I've been really fortunate to respond very, very well to one or to one, one and a half milligrams a week. I think just the beginning of this week, I decided to ramp that up a tiny bit. I kind of, you know, I'm 
now that I'm maybe toward the end of my Reda experiment, I kind of wanted to see what different levels feel like because I've tolerated the drug really, really well. So I think right now, I think I, what did I take yesterday? I took one and a half yesterday. I took one today. So basically this week will be two and a half milligrams of Reda. And I think if you're going by what was already in my system, I think that basically spiked me to about three and a half milligrams in my bloodstream right now. Reda has a half-life of six days. So it doesn't, I wouldn't say it comes down quickly, but it comes down, you know, reasonably fast. But what's nice about that half-life is, you know, if you get it up there, you know, and I did this recently, I went to Puerto Rico on a week-long business trip. And so I just took that one and a half dose at the beginning of the week. And that nicely carried me for the whole week. And so that's really nice when you have medications like that, that you can take and you don't have to like travel with, you know, needles and that sort of stuff. But I've been really enjoying it. Anyways, thanks again for all your support. And I will talk to you in the next one.